What up, though? You already know how I go. Smash, like, subscribe, comment. I don't care what you comment as long as you comment. Make sure y'all subscribe. Um, smash them links. Get on Clubhouse with me. Get on Instagram with me. Get on Twitter with me, so on and so forth. Um, but the main ones I'm on TikTok, uh, Facebook main page, Facebook uh, follower page, and um, Instagram. Inbox me. Thank y'all for reaching out to me for the advice. Uh, thank Kakarot for the big girl cash app donations. And that's definitely going to the homeless. Appreciate you, beloved. Make sure y'all go look at those paints I got for sale on my community page and my offer up page, so on and so forth. But let's get straight into this video. You dig? Um, remember, I told y'all a couple videos back, you got to watch who you date in prison and get to know them and know what they were in prison for and what they did, so on and so forth. I remember I made a status about. <clears throat> I made a status about everybody. Matter of fact, it wasn't a status. It was a TikTok. I said everybody that goes to prison is not guilty. And um, a lady had inboxed me. She said, why would you tell my daughter that? My daughter knows you. She, she listens to you. Such and such, such forth. She talked to a guy in prison. And I didn't put enough context, details in there, right? Context and details in there, right? I, when I say everybody that don't, uh, everybody that goes to prison is not uh, guilty. I meant, you gotta look up what they were in there for. If you got a CSC, it's one thing if somebody said that he did something that there was really nothing behind, but if you get the paperwork and you do your um, due diligence and your research and get on your MCLs and things like that and look up the case, if it says they found DNA evidence on that little girl, there's no way around that, okay? That's what I meant, okay? So, but I told y'all, don't date men in prison unless you know what you're dealing with completely and then you also have to really get to know an individual to see what their intentions are because when they come on from prison, you never know what they've been through. They could have been in there getting bullied, beat up, all this stuff, and they come out and try to um, inflict that same force that was put upon them in prison. So you never know what goes on with a guy in prison. I'm not saying don't write a guy in prison. I'm saying be very mindful that prison changes people. He might have went in there when he was 17 and you knew him you know, for most of his life, but he comes out as a 40-year-old man. You don't know what he endured. You don't know how prison played an effect on his mindset or her mindset trust me but this is a story right here that's crazy shout out christine phillips um with the washington post this is you know this happened in michigan shout out christine phillips make sure to go check her out she did this a, a while back so let's get into it a, a a a woman married to a parole murderer years later he killed all her children Wow. In 1991, Michigan man Gregory Green stabbed his wife in the face and chest, killing her and the unborn child. Then he called 911 and waited for police to come. After serving about 16 years in prison for murder, Green was released on parole with the support of family and friends, including the pastor who lobbied on his behalf and whose daughter Green would marry. Now, you see, this is what Christianity does to you. <laughs> Sometimes, man, there's no offense to Christianity, but... It, it, it have you tell everybody you gotta forgive and forget. There's some things, bro. You you might want to forgive, but you not you don't want to forget. You don't want to become comfortable with it. This dude already been in prison for murdering his pregnant wife, but you got this pastor coming along, black pastor coming along. We need to forgive this brother. He made a mistake. That's not a mistake. That's a conscious decision. A mistake is when you walk outside and you don't see the ice and you trip and fall. Okay. People tell me in my life, I, I, you made mistakes. You know, some, some, No, I made bad decisions. I didn't make mistakes. They say, oh, you wasn't thinking. You always think your brain working even when you sleep. It might not be consciously thinking about what you want to think about, but your brain is working nevertheless, okay? Um, so Gregory and I were friends before his mishap, and he was incarcerated. Fred Harris, a pastor in Detroit, wrote to the Michigan Parole Board in August of 2005. He was a member of our church. I feel he has paid for his unfortunate lack of self-control and the damage he has caused as much as possible and is sorry, right? If he was to be released, he would be welcomed as a part of our church community and whatever we could do to help him adjust, we would. Harris wrote again a year later. Green was released in 2008 and later married Faith Harris. They had two daughters, Coy, five, and Kayla, four. Then came a shocking slaughter. Right, Gregory Green, look, he looked like he... Uh, early in the morning of September 21st, 2016, Faith Harris Green found herself bound with duct tape and zip ties in the basement of their home in Dearborn Heights, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. Her foot had been shot and her face slashed with a box cutter. Prosecutors say 
No matter what she did, she didn't deserve that if she wasn't trying to get you killed or something like that in your sleep. I don't know, right? Her two teenage children, Gregory Green's stepchildren, were with her, dead of gunshot wounds. She had watched them die. Her two younger children were dead upstairs, poisoned with carbon monoxide. The killer was Harris Green's husband, the same man whose freedom her father advocated for more than a decade ago. As Green did when he killed his first wife, he called 911 and waited for the police to come, authorities said. I believe he in the Nation of Islam, too. Um, I, I believe I ran across him. He had just shot his family and they were inside the house. He told the officers, Green is back in prison. Last week he received what amounts to a life sentence. He'll be 97 by the time he's eligible for parole, according to the prosecutor's office. During the sentencing hearing, Harris Green, wearing a white turtleneck, spoke to her children's killer. Perhaps for the last time, you're a con artist, you are a monster, you are a devil in disguise. You are now forever exposed, she said, as she stood behind a podium in a Wayne County courtroom. Her ex-husband in a dark green jail uniform sat stiotically a feet away, his back toward her. No punishment will be enough for her children's death, Harris Green said. Not even torture and death would be justice, she said. Your justice will come when you burn in hell for all eternity for murdering four innocent children, all because you're insecure. A spokesman woman of the prosecutor's office said, Harris Green has asked to not be contacted by media. She was granted a divorce in December, according to the media reports. When prompted Green to kill his family and why he immediately confessed to it is unclear. He had been found mentally competent. The Detroit News reported last month he um, pled guilty to charges. Green cried as he described what he'd done. Unfortunately, I took the lives of Kayla and Coy, Chadney and Cara. He said in court, according to Detroit News, I shot my ex-wife. I left my two girls in the car. Cara and Chadney shot them. The car was filled with carbon monoxide while the two children were inside. Investigators found duct taped to a muffler of the car, a plastic tube was attached to it, according to the prosecutor's office. The bodies were later moved inside the house. Green also spoke during his sentencing hearing last week. His brief statement was apologetic, but gave no explanation of the motive behind the violent deaths. I feel bad for how this deeply impacted everyone, and may God help him, help me, he said in court. Green was denied parole four times, twice in 2004 and twice in 2006, before he was released in 2008, said Chris Gotts a spokesman for the Michigan Department of Corrections. If the parole board hadn't granted Green would have been released in 2012, I don't think that would have changed the outcome, but that's crazy. Um, his prison record provided nearly no trace of violence, no hint that years after he will be released, he will commit crimes more brutal than the first. His history while incarcerated appeared clean, if not perfect. Records show that although he was unable to explain the outburst that brought him to prison, he never less Followed the rules and stayed out of trouble. Excellent good block reports. Good past work history. Reese's um, parole eligibility report. He is respectful to staff and other prisoners. No minor conducts to report. Reads another. Green had only one misconduct while incarcerated. He was given a ticket in 2002 for getting involved in a fistfight over television. God said by the time his parole was granted in 2008, Green had completed educational programs in prison. God said he also had plans for work once he was released. During a news conference in September, Dearborn Heights Mayor Don Pelletico summed up the sheer lack of explanation for Green's murderous outrage. It's just difficult to understand the motivation. I just don't understand what happened in this household. Pelletico told reporters, I can't fathom uh, this whole process. I just don't understand it. I don't understand it either. Even if he was insecure, even if she was cheating, she didn't deserve to be tied up, shot, and the kids killed. Your gripe with her is your gripe with her, but he involved the kids, man. It's some sinister people out here in this world, man. Let me know what y'all think about the story, man. Make sure y'all smash like, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to smash like and comment. I don't care what you comment, as long as you comment. Peace.